Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. Today's video I wanted to take a close look at the new purchase I've made. And this thing was pretty damn nice when it comes to the price. <laughs> I was hunting for some mini PCs and I did notice that the MSI Trident and other gaming machines are getting really cheap now. Two of, let's say, the, so many devices are being released. This is a very interesting product. Of course it's second hand and where you're going to be finding it depends where basically how much you need to pay for it. There are different models out there. This is the i7 model and I picked it up for around like 250 or 300 euro. Comes complete with the power supply in here for fighting the machine itself and of course the piece of plastic that we need to put it in if you want to put it in let's say the standing position. For protection he added a plastic bag over this all. Doesn't matter, let's rip it apart and let's see how the condition is. On the picture it looks quite nice and I did a pretty good deal with the guy and he was quite, let's say, this fast for shipping. So that's great and of course this is one of those devices I do already own but it's a different model but also I have some special plans for this thing. So when you're looking at older technology, we can still do some cool things with it. So this comes with a GTX 1060, a very familiar card in combination with an i7. And this is not like the newest one, but for emulation we can do some very cool things. But also when it comes to indie games and maybe some AAA gaming. And one of the things that we're doing last today is going to be cleaning this thing up and opening it up because there's a lot of like dust in there. But first let's boot it up and let's see if it's going to be posting and if we can do anything with it. The machine itself is in working condition, but it does ask me if I want to remove something. So let's take a close look at it. So because we don't need to like remove all of the temporary files, because that's going to be a bad thing. So let's check out if we can get this thing in, let's say, factory mode, where all of the drive have been configured and it's going to be a plug and play solution when it comes to this MSI Trident i7. Well, one thing is the fact that he never cleaned this thing or so far I can see. There is an, let's say, a warranty seal over here, but this thing hasn't been removed, so they didn't do any maintenance whatsoever. So let's remove the two screws so we can remove the top cover. And we're just going to be cleaning this thing up because you see actually like there are a lot of dust bunnies in here. Absolutely crazy. So this is the first screw. The second one is over there. Oh yeah, we're breaking the seal after all this time. And that is one of the things that you need always to do when it comes to these PCs. I always need to clean it up. Okay, so let's be very gentle. Let's remove the cover and oh man, this thing is absolutely crazy when it comes to like, all the dust on the inside. And yep, it's absolutely a fact that this thing needs some cleaning in the inside. Oh man, there's a lot of dust in here. Absolutely crazy. And the same also goes for the CPU over there, or the cooler at least. And we just know, we're actually not going to be removing the, let's say, CPU core. We're just going to get it free of dust. But you can just actually see there is an 8 gigabyte module in here. So it would be nice to have dual channel. That would be absolutely a significant improvement of this device. But when it comes to this particular like say, setup, we have cleaned it up. The only thing we need to take consideration, maybe we need to do some thermal paste replacement in the future if this thing is heating up. I'm going to leave in the one single channel 8 gigabyte for now, just to see how this thing comes out of the box. And actually comes out of the box because I got somebody sent it to me. But nevertheless, let's take a close look and let's do some testing. All right, so let's take a close look at the specifications. It's time for the wicked nerdy time with the CPU Z. Intel Core i7, the 7 series or the 7700, comes with the code name KB Lake. 65 watts of max TDP has the socket 1151 LGA. So when it comes to the overall performance, we're going to check it out when it comes to some gaming. So over here we can see that we do have some nice overall specs when it comes to also the bus specifications. This is a PC Express 3.0. MicroStar International is the manufacturer of the main board. We're only having one slot, an 8 gigabyte DDR4. So I wanted to check out if I can maybe upgrade this to a dual channel in the, later on, let's say in the future, because we still have a slot ready. So what is do interesting that it seems to be having even more slots, but I'm guessing this is on the other side of the main board itself. The graphics is the GeForce GTX 1060, 3GB is more than enough for the stuff that I want to play. 120 watts 
and that's actually what we're getting when it comes to the CPUs with and the Wicked Nerdy time. Okay, so when it comes to indie games, we can just play all kinds of indie games without any problem. I've been using the Amazon Triton 3 for quite a long time now, where I actually bought this one extra. This is going to be for my local area network play with some Crisis and other games. But I have been using a couple of these things for quite a long time now, because the form factor, it gives more like a game console look. But also for indie games, it's so much fun, and this thing is capable of running all kinds of them without any problem. But if you're looking into, let's say, some older games, this MSI Trident 3 is absolutely amazing in combination with this i7 and the GTX 1060. It's maybe only a 3GB card, but for these old games, it is no problem whatsoever. You can even see, if you're looking at like, the statistics, here it has like 21-23% of the power of the GPU is actually being used. And there are so many games they can actually play. Don't get me wrong, old school games that are basically based for Windows XP, yeah, those will not run at all. But can it run Crisis? Not the remastered version, the original version that in my opinion looks absolutely great. So yep, you can still run this and you can just actually see we still have some power left. There was one particular case that I noticed that it was going to the 80, maybe 90% of GPU usage. This game has been set to full HD, everything maxed out and that is absolutely great. It's one of my favorite games to play on a local area network. But going an overview in spectating mode over the say the biggest map where I think it is when it comes to like a normal deathmatch. Yep, you can see it hitting 80% and it needs to be rendering like crazy. But that's it. And games like these are just playable now on these like say cheaper mini PCs. So in the beginning it did struggle. You can just see the massive drop in frames by actually going into the gameplay. You don't see any problems going on. So it will hit it up all the way up to 84% of the GPU being used. So this actually Dead Alive 6 game will push this thing to the limit. The settings have been set to high. Every setting is set to let's say the highest setting you can think of. A combination with 1080p. Looking closely you can just actually see that 91% has been even hit when it comes to GPU usage. So this is one of those games that actually can be played fine on this but take consideration you will have some minor dips that are normally not really noticeable i also love to do the crash test and this is one of my favorite games to test out i can actually see this runs on every setting high full hd 60 fps no problem whatsoever and even having some room left when it comes to the gpu rendering power so this is a game that can even be run fine on let's say an older device like this too I don't want to use Mortal Kombat 1 because that's actually the newest game out there. I just want to see how far we can push it with an older game like Mortal Kombat 11 because it's already like a very old machine. You can see 100% when it comes to, let's say, the GPU usage. So that's also just the reason I wanted to see what's going to be happening on 1080p, every setting set to high. But there's a like a lot of these older fighting games can be played without any problem. Full HD is absolutely great. Of course, if you're going to be looking into the newer games, think about Street Fighter 6 or some other ones, you're going to be having, let's say, way more difficulty playing those games on higher settings, full HD with every setting set to high. Because this is just an older GPU and CPU combination. Particularly when it comes to the GPU, there we're going to have needing just an upgrade when it comes, let's say, some newer games. But let's take a close look at the temperatures. So I've been playing a couple of games, even a couple of ones that have been pushing this thing to the 100% GPU performance. And yep, to my surprise, you can just see that this thing is turning into 100 Celsius. So we can maybe fix it in the future by removing the thermal paste. And that can be absolutely like a big upgrade with these older machines. But just wanted to see how far we can push it. I only had this a couple of times, 100 Celsius, when pushing the CPU to the limit. And that didn't happen a lot when it comes to the older games. So next up, when you're looking at the GPU, the GTX 1063 GB. So this is actually pushing itself to the 60, 69 Celsius to the, on the hotspot itself. So when it comes to, let's say, the overall performance, yeah, it's not, it's, an, it's a quite a great performance, but not for the heat itself, because that's, of course, what you're getting with these, let's say, compact designs. But how about the emulation performance? That is something else I want to dedicate this video to. So if you just want to play some old school games, this is not going to be a problem. Think about 8-bit, 16-bit era, some PlayStation 1, PC Engine or even some MAME. Here we have a lot of possibilities due of the fast CPU inside of this machine. Do take consideration if you're having an i5 or an i7, the emulation on the higher end system can be slightly different. It's going to be a blast to the past when it comes to the old school systems. Of course there are a gazillion different devices out there they can actually play these things with. One of the first systems I always wanted to try out was PlayStation 1 because we can even upscale it with the internal resolution where it's going to be looking even more better. Then that's one of the things you cannot do on a cheap game box but we can do with a mini PC. 
We're starting off with some PlayStation 2 emulation. Uh, like I mentioned before, with the PlayStation 1, we can upscale it, and it is no difference for the PlayStation 2. We can even absolutely like upscale this thing to 4K resolution internally, and this thing is absolutely a beast when it comes to PlayStation 2 emulation. With an old PC, we have so much fun, and it's absolutely great to see how far we can push it. We have around 50% sometimes usage with the GPU, but when you're looking at, let's say, maybe some different games, it can be slightly different. Okay, the first thing I wanted to showcase is actually how fast will it load with PlayStation 3 emulation. So depending on the power of the CPU, I've tried this emulator with, let's say, i9s, and they were having like almost instant loading. And with an older i5 or i7 or an i3, we need to wait a little bit longer. But the loading time, I don't find it really annoying. But as you can see, actually, I just wanted to showcase you how fast it will load. You need to wait. It will be like 30 seconds or so, maybe a little bit longer depending on the game. Okay, so when it comes to PlayStation 3 overall emulation, it's absolutely great. We can even mess around with the upscaling if you want to, but the overall performance with most games are just great. And of course, you need to take consideration when it comes to, let's say, the overall performance and of course, compatibility with some games. In the end, I think it's absolutely great. This device is just really nice when it comes to, let's say, PlayStation 2 and 3 emulation. So let's move on to some PlayStation Portable. Next up, let's take a close look at some God of War, 10 times resolution, no, like say, tweaks going on, everything set to the maximum level, and this i7 doesn't have any problems with it whatsoever. So, also for PlayStation Portable, we can just really enjoy ourselves some God of War, the change of kinkiness. Let's move on to the GameCube, and with the GameCube, we are going to set it to the 4K internal resolution, just to see how we have an overall performance. So Zero GX is one of my favorite games to play, and is absolutely one of those most, let's say, difficult ones to emulate. But the performance is absolutely amazing, and the game looks just great. And I think it's absolutely cool to see that we can even play this on an older, let's say, Amazon Trident 3. Where we have all kinds of do very expensive, let's say, mini PCs nowadays. So with the MC Trident, this thing has so much potential. And even looking at the CPU, GPU, it isn't done and even being used fully. So an overall performance, we need to play a little bit more. Get a stable 60 FPS. But so far, so good. We can always start tweaking when it comes to some settings to check out if we can get an even better overall, let's say, performance in combination with a better, nicer look. But also let's take a close look at the Wii with the same emulator and the overall performance is quite nice with the 4K resolution. We can always like, let's say do some tweaking to get an overall better result with some better emulation performance. But so far out of the box, it looks kind of cool and it has a stable frame rate so far. The MSI Trident 3 is absolutely a great piece of technology. It's getting cheaper and that is a very convenient thing because you can play a lot of cool games on it when it comes to indie, AAA but also emulation. Throughout the video I've been using just the Xbox 360 controller because it's going to be recognized by a lot of games plug and play. Let me know in the comments what do you think of this solution. Yeah, I picked it up for around let's say $2.99. Maybe you can find it even cheaper depending where you're living it and where you're finding it. But if it's going to be even more cheaper, it's going to be even more fun to pick it up. Thank you all for watching, consider subscribing and it would be great to see you in the next video.